Welcome back. We begin our week-long celebration honoring some of our local veterans with remarkable stories. Mike Phillips served in the Army during the Vietnam War and returned home with post-traumatic stress disorder. After facing his own demons, NBC 5's Taylor Ryan tells us how he's now made it his life's mission to help other veterans heal. Well, I'm certainly in a better place than I was. Mike Phillips lives in Medford now, but growing up as a self-described military brat, he called many places home as a kid. Move every two years when dad's uh, duty assignment was changed. So when he came of age in 1969, joining the Army and deploying to Vietnam was a natural choice. It was almost like, to me, a rite of passage. But nothing could have prepared him for what he was about to experience overseas. It was a, uh, a, a total culture shock. I had no idea what I was getting into going to Vietnam. Phillips spent two years in Saigon as a convoy driver for the 572nd Transportation Company. And like many who serve in the military, Phillips returned home with battle wounds. And while they weren't physical, they were debilitating. I'm diagnosed with severe PTSD. Feeling alone and misunderstood, drugs and alcohol became his companions. I didn't even admit to being a Vietnam veteran for almost three decades. I was just tired of the confrontation. Substance abuse led to years of unemployment, four bouts of homelessness, and suicidal thoughts. But eventually, Phillips realized he needed help. He lived at the White City VA facility for a little over two years, learning to accept his past. That uh, experience was, was probably as traumatic for me as any experience that I, I encountered in Vietnam. But it was essential. White City saved my life. So has traveling back to Vietnam. Phillips has been back three times now. Each retreat that I go to, I'm always able to take another rock out of, out of my rucksack. Proving healing really is a process. I have, uh, I have good days, and, and then I still have uh, not so good days. And while on his own journey, Phillips' new mission is helping other veterans find peace. Helping them through the healing process uh, has given meaning to my life. That is such a powerful moment. In Medford, Taylor Ryan, NBC5 News. Wow. Neat. Just one of many of the stories mm -hmm. we'll be sharing this week. Looking forward to seeing many more. Very cool to meet these people and, and you know, respect their service and everything they've done for all of us. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, tonight in the Whip Around Dental Hygienist by day, Gator Wrangler by night. <laughs> this gator was finally taken to a sanctuary where he won't be frightening any more people in parking lots. Plus, Adam Colfax up next with your full weather forecast. Stay with us. You know, just because our address is the Rogue Valley Manor doesn't mean we sit around waiting for someone to yell bingo which was the whole point of moving here. We learn here, we play, and we grow, and we love here. So yeah, we're retired, but we're a long way from old. Rogue Valley Manor, we live here. We will greet you with a smile every time. We always make sure your car buying experience is the right one. We treat every customer in our store like they're a guest in our home. From the moment you pull up, you'll be treated with respect. We have one goal here, and that is to satisfy customers. We make sure your service experience is a great one. We have a great team at Crater Lake Port. You'll really like shopping here. The right cars. The right financing. The right experience. And we're continuing our week-long celebration of local veterans tonight. Larry Rupp served our country in the Vietnam War and returned a decorated Army captain with three Purple Hearts. Count him, that's right. Now he's part of a group that's paying it forward, helping other returning servicemen and women. Here's NBC 5's Taylor Ryan. The three medals down below are the Purple Hearts. Purple Heart received for each time wounded. Larry Rupp is now a proud military vet, glad to have served his country in Vietnam, but it hasn't always been easy for him to talk about it. It took a long time for me to come to terms with things that I had done in Vietnam. A Southern California native, Rupp was drafted in 1966, just two years out of high school. I received this letter in the mail, which my father referred to as my letter of attitude adjustment. 
As a new husband and brand new father, Rupp left the comforts of Newport Beach for southern Vietnam, assigned to the 25th Infantry Division. It was different. It was hot. I, I remember the humidity when I stepped off the airplane. My God, I go, this is going to be a long year. That year turned into about six. Rupp found himself, a young man of 22, heading up platoons that saw plenty of action. Well, there was a lot of responsibility, and it was kind of a lonely life. There was always that possibility that I might not see my wife or see my daughter again. A possibility that came dangerously close to reality as Rupp sustained three different combat injuries, one gunshot wound and two from shrapnel. One night they hit us really bad and uh, I lost one of my guys. I had been raised a Catholic. The commandments, it said thou shalt not kill, but yet it, I'd have the priest from Vietnam say, well, these are different circumstances. I had a real hard time dealing with that. And even when Rupp returned home, he found himself troubled. It takes a long time for people to accept things sometimes. With all of the challenges Rupp faced overseas, he knows a lot about what returning vets need. That's why he's a member of the local chapter of the Military Order of the Purple Heart. That's the one thing that's nice about our group. We all have one thing in common. We've been there, we've done that. We've experienced the pain and the mental anguish. And through that work, Rupp's also helping himself. It's our responsibility. Taking one of the hardest experiences of his life and using it to bring other veterans some sense of peace. In Central Point, Taylor Ryan, NBC5 News. The local military order of the Purple Heart Group that Rupp belongs to offers college scholarships to returning veterans and recently also built a wheelchair accessible ramp at a local vet's home. Just another incredible story. Looking forward to the stories that are still to come this week. That's right. All week long. It's so cool. Well, tonight in the Whip Around, ever wondered how it felt like to fall 1,600 feet down a mountain? No, <laughs> but this skier can tell you how he cushioned his drop off this slope. Ouch. Plus, Adam Kolpak's up next with your full weather forecast. Stay with us. We will greet you with a smile every time. We always make sure your car buying experience is the right one. We treat every customer in our store like they're a guest in our home. From the moment you pull up, you'll be treated with respect. We have one goal here, and that is to satisfy customers. We make sure your service experience is a great one. We have a great team at Crater Lake Port. You'll really like shopping here. The right cars. The right financing. The right experience. You know, just because our address is the Rogue Valley Manor doesn't mean we sit around waiting for someone to yell bingo. Which was the whole point of moving here. We learn here. We play and we grow, and we love here. So yeah, we're retired, <laughs> but we're a long way from old. Rogue Valley Manor, we live here. It's day three of our week-long celebration of our local veterans with extraordinary stories. And today, we're introducing you to Hugh Crawford. A Vietnam veteran who now lives in Central Point, Crawford was instrumental in the passing of a bill that now requires POW MIA flags be flown at all public buildings in Oregon. NBC5's Taylor Ryan tells us how for Crawford, this mission is unlike any he's ever had because this one's personal. The flag originally started in the Vietnam War. Hugh Crawford proudly flies the POW MIA flag outside his Central Point home. That flag means a lot to a lot of people. Including himself. While he wasn't a prisoner of war or missing in action, Crawford was often assigned to help find soldiers while serving in a helicopter brigade in Vietnam. We'd spend days looking and, uh, you know, and you fly for hours and hours and hours. We never personally found them you think about what those guys had gone through. I thought about that a lot. But it hasn't been until recently that Crawford has felt comfortable enough to share his thoughts and memories of Vietnam. I got involved in Mar Veterans stuff and it, 
it really came out. Uh, I, I, I think more Vietnam now than ever. And now he's turning those thoughts into action, asking Governor Kate Brown to sign a bill he created requiring the POW MIA flag to fly at the state capitol and all public buildings in Oregon. I worked for two and a half years, obtained veterans groups from all over Oregon. It passed 100 percent on both sides of the House every vote. For Crawford, House Bill 2892 has been a way to honor the soldiers he was never able to find. In the 40-some years since I was in Vietnam, there's never been a day that I haven't thought about it. In Central Point, Taylor Ryan, NBC5 News. For so many, they can't stop thinking about it. Right, certainly. It's every, every day seeing these stories, and certainly on Veterans Day, it's so powerful to see and so wonderful. To be, to be a part of that and get to share those stories. Right. If you see a veteran, thank them today. The day's not over, mm -hmm. but thank them every day. Absolutely. Well, tonight in the whip around, a Washington State grandma chases out some robbers. Tough granny. Why, she says they knew not to mess with her. Plus, Adam Kolpak's up next with your full weather forecast. Stay with us. Just because our address is the Rogue Valley Manor doesn't mean we sit around waiting for someone to yell bingo, which was the whole point of moving here. We learn here, we play, and we grow, and we love here. So yeah, we're retired, but we're a long way from old. Rogue Valley Manor, we live here. We will greet you with a smile every time. We always make sure your car buying experience is the right one. We treat every customer in our store like they're a guest in our home. From the moment you pull up, you'll be treated with respect. We have one goal here, and that is to satisfy customers. We make sure your service experience is a great one. We have a great team at Crater Lake Port. You'll really like shopping here. The right cars. The right financing. The right experience. All week long, we've been honoring our local veterans in honor of Veterans Day. Tonight, we're featuring one man who's a member of what many call the greatest generation. 96-year-old Walter Haynes is one of the brave that took up arms in the fight in the Pacific against global tyranny in World War II. NBC5's Bianca Peters shares how, for four years, he survived a Japanese POW camp and survived because of love. I got shot by a Japanese Zero fighter. We had lost all control of the plane. Walter Haynes was 24 when he was shot down in the Philippines in 1942. He spent the next roughly four years in a Japanese POW camp. Leather leggings from Dutch soldiers. While he was stripped of all he owned, the one thing that kept him going was something they couldn't take away. Memories of his fiance, Berna Jean. I felt like I was leaving the lady that I loved because we had become engaged. A dive bomber, Haynes had promised to be back to marry the love of his life in one year, but fate had other plans. The night they put us in the jail, they rather severely beat me. Though there were some horrific moments that almost cost him his life, Haynes survived by serving as a cook for his captors. But then, not long after the war ended, he was sent home to Berna Jean, who until recently didn't even know he was alive. She used to write letters, but many of them did come back and scrawled across, unknown here, believed dead, because I disappeared off the face of the earth for almost three years. I saw her get off that plane, and I ran, <laughs> I ran to the plane. Walter and Berna Jean Haynes were married just three months later. We were husband and wife for 65 years before she passed away. About five years ago now. So that's a story. Despite returning with scars both on and under the surface, Haynes has no ill will towards anyone. He even lived with Berna Jean and their daughters in Japan for a short time. Maybe there's too much hate in the world, too much, not enough love and too much hate. In Central Point, Bianca Peters, NBC5 News. Wow, 
Walter Haynes retired as a first lieutenant. He and Vernon Jean have three daughters, grandkids, and even great-grandkids. He now volunteers his time with a local hospice organization. I didn't tell you about that one. I knew when mm. we were reading that one before I even saw right. saw his face, Walter's face, that that one was going to be amazing. If you ever get see. the chance to sit down with a World War II vet, there's so few nowadays.